Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The vital assets of naval warfare, submarines, eventually reach the end of their service lives and are decommissioned efficiently. The recycling process of submarines is complex, especially for nuclear-powered ones, mainly due to the fact that it involves meticulous steps to ensure safety, environmental protection, and the recovery of valuable materials. For decades, the United States has embraced a disposal and recycling process that allows it to get the most out of the ships. The process consists of defueling and decommissioning, and if applicable, nuclear reactor disposal. It is a long and often time-consuming process, but it ensures that maximum value is obtained from the dismantled ship. The Benjamin Franklin-class ballistic mission submarine known as the USS James K. Polk was decommissioned in 1999 after more than three decades of service. The process started when the submarine was loaded into a dry dock at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard in Bremerton, Washington. A dry dock is a long man-made canal that can be flooded or drained to provide workers access to all parts of a ship's hull. When it comes to a submarine, the dry dock must be flooded to allow the sub to enter easily. This step is typically performed with the help of several tugboats. Once in place, the gate of the dry dock is sealed and the water is pumped out again. The next process is removing all valuable components and any items that may be useful. As the cutting process begins, the hull is divided into three or four large sections, depending on the size of the submarine, which makes it much easier for the workers to access the interior and disassemble various components. Throughout this process, the submarine sits on a set of rails at the bottom of the dry dock, making it easier for the crews to access areas under the submarine if necessary. The hull and the interior are slowly dismantled piece by piece. Due to the massive size and weight of the materials being dealt with, it is important to make sure each component is supported by heavy-duty pulley and chain systems during the dismantling process. This practice prevents them from falling after they are cut away from the main section, ultimately securing the components and lives of the crew working there. Since the beginning of shipyards, heavy lifting cranes have played a vital role in both developing and dismantling ships. Even when the ship is cut apart, each component of the vessel can still weigh thousands of pounds, which can only be moved with the help of a crane hanging hundreds of feet in the air. The crane operator communicates with the crew on the ground while moving each component deliberately, as one wrong move could send it falling. This will not only risk the lives of the workers below, but also jeopardize the component. A 
A similar method known as ship breaking is used to dismantle ships by breaking them up for scrap material. This process has particularly lowered the demand for mined iron ore and has reduced energy use in the steel making process. These benefits have led to an increase in the ship breaking practice globally, and almost 500 to 700 commercial ships are sold to scrapyards annually. A large portion of these ships are processed by Pakistan, which takes nearly 120 ships or almost 16% of the global ship breaking industry. For this reason, 31 miles west of the country's largest city, Karachi, an extraordinary ship breaking yard stretches out several miles along the coast. The most important area is the Gadani Ship Breaking Yard, which holds a total of 132 ship breaking plots. Since the 1980s, it has been one of the largest ship breaking yards globally in terms of capacity and the number of ships dismantled annually. At its peak, Gadani can even dismantle almost 100 ships per year, depending on the market conditions. There are logistics behind handling such a huge number of boats, so the company owners talk directly with the ship owners to determine the time to commission the ship. The operators that are involved in the ship breaking process use specialized tools such as hammers, wrenches, and cutting tools. The ship breaking procedures cannot be performed 24-7. These efforts are highly influenced by the tide. During a low tide period, more of the beach area is available. Hence, the ship breaking process is highly efficient during that period. The workers start by scrapping non-essential equipment, furnishings, and fixtures from the interior spaces of the ship. Before dismantling the boat, the workers remove any hazardous materials that might be inside the ship. They cut through the steel using a plasma cutting machine, which uses ionized gas to cut through thick material. When the operators have enough scrap material, they start to remove it using a series of cranes. The scrap material is then moved further around the yard using forklifts and front end loaders. When the interior elements have been removed, the crew finds suitable anchor points on the ship's hull to attach chains, which secures the ship to anchor points on the beach. The chains are wrapped to the anchor using shackles and bolts to ensure the boat remains still. The winches located on the shore drag out a complete section of the boat. The ship's hull is gradually cut into sections, starting from the top deck and working downwards, which provides them with bigger components. The 
workers focus on cutting through the weld joints to increase their chances of obtaining an undamaged part. The detached parts are easy for the crew to drag using cranes. Later, the detached parts are further cut into steel sheets, and any excess rust is removed to make recycling easier. These sheets are processed into molten steel, cast into ingots or billets, and then easily transported to the market. In addition to ships and submarines, there are several other marvels at sea. For instance, a giant oil rig located in the middle of the ocean, a hundred miles away from shore. Oil rigs are where workers extract and process petroleum and natural gas, lying in rock formations under the seabed. Similar to ships or submarines, oil rigs are also decommissioned. These plants are removed from the water and the supporting structure is cut according to the pre-designed dismantling plan. Once the top side is separated, the massive crane lifts and places it on a heavy lift vessel. Later, the legs of the rigs are cut into sections using explosives or cutting tools. The structure is then transported to the shore alongside the top side. Hydrocarbons or hazardous materials are removed from the sections. The metals and other materials are often recycled and used in construction manufacturing, or a similar industry. Another valuable technique is to convert oil rigs into artificial reefs. It is a unique approach that involves sinking retired oil production platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. The first R2R -R project involved towing a decommissioned rig to a predetermined site and then sinking it. The structure became colonized by marine life very rapidly. Converting rigs to reefs enhances biodiversity by providing hard surfaces for coral and other organisms to attach to. Moreover, it provides shelter for fish and supports local fisheries by creating new habitats. Old ships can also be repurposed as artificial reefs in the Gulf of Mexico. This area is composed of mud and sand with no hard surface for marine life to attach to which means only a few fish can live in this area. But the reality is the complete opposite. This place is transforming into a thriving underwater ecosystem by sinking rigs and ships. The process of dismantling, scrapping, and recycling of large vessels serves crucial environmental and economic purposes. These processes not only mitigate potential hazards posed by aging or obsolete structures, but also contribute to sustainable practices by recycling materials and creating habitats for marine life through initiatives like artificial reefs.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.